In the previous episode of Startup, the final eight were observed on their abilities to develop and communicate a clear and effective marketing plan for the judges. Marketing challenge is awesome because uh, we do a terrible job in marketing and our content is not written professionally because we don't have any professional help. But taking printouts and all that, we are a company which supports Go Green, so we don't take any printouts at all. But I think they all have to have a very, very interesting element of design incorporated. So I guess that's still critical. We need to attract their attention straight away so that they will give us that three minutes to pitch. They made us really sit down and think about what we're going to write who we're going to reach out to, how we're going to reach out to them. I appreciate some of the comments the judges yeah. gave. It was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you after the results. Right? <laughs> Hello, welcome to Startup Season 2. I'm Chloe Cho, your host. In today's episode, our eight finalists get to face their ultimate sales challenge. They're given exactly three minutes to persuade a potential customer on why they should buy their product. The judges will then evaluate their sales performance while taking customer feedback into account. Before tackling the next challenge, the finalists attended a sales workshop conducted by Casey Lai, co-founder and chief commercial officer of My Republic. He shared how sufficient preparation and specific end goals were essential to making a sales pitch. Nothing is going to develop as planned. All right, there's bound to be failure somewhere. Uh, but what is important is that if one of the engines shut off, you know that your plane can still stay afloat. Whenever you introduce a product, one of the key is simplicity. If it's too difficult for your customer to do business with you, they will just walk away. This is it, final challenge. Are you guys ready? Yes. Fantastic. This is like the mother of all challenges. It's all about sales. You've got your product ready, you know, your product's doing well, but if you don't have the right sales, you can't sell to the customer, it's meaningless. Okay, each of you will be given three minutes to pitch to your prospects. Subsequently, your prospects will be given three minutes to ask you questions clarify some of the features, you know, have a bit of a discussion with them. So it's a really important challenge because like I said earlier, if you don't have the traction via sales, the product is meaningless. So take it seriously. Are you guys ready for this challenge? Yes. yes. Fantastic. Good luck, guys. The startups were able to consult their mentors while preparing for their pitch. The mentors also threw in a surprise challenge to test how much the finalists can think out of the box. So Andrea, a little surprise challenge to the challenge. We're in the lift together. You've got three minutes to pitch me. <laughs> okay, wow. Um, tell me a little bit about your frustrations with the email today. Imagine I am Kate Moss. How would you introduce any nails to Kate Moss? It's a very affordable way for people to keep up with fashion. I've got a flight to catch. I need to leave. You've got three minutes to give me a pitch. Disrupting the industry with innovative data science. I'm an employer. Jogjit's an employee looking for part-time work. You have three minutes to pitch us. I essentially allow you to design your own job. And what happens is that it actually finds the closest match to an employer's schedule as possible. Hmm. I think yeah. I might have to go to a different booth now. I'll give it a try. Thank Good you. to see you again. Thank you. Good seeing you. What are the criteria of the sales challenge? Obviously, it is whether they can close the deal. <laughs> that is the most important, whether they excite you know, the prospects or not. For the sales challenge, we want to see how the finalists articulate their value proposition and to be able to bring in the right messages at the right time while they are in conversation with the customer. The most important thing when you're selling uh, to somebody, make sure you understand who your audience is, right? What problem are they trying to solve? And then you have to tailor your pitch for that specific message. If you don't do that, you'll never sell. 
Hi, Rachel. I'm Wilson. Hi, Wilson. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Love Bonito is one of Asia's leading online retailers that offers quality apparel to women. For today's objective, basically, is to tell you how Shopperbot is able to drive traffic to Love Bonito mm -hmm. and eventually increase sales mm -hmm. for your site. So how are they notified about new arrivals from mm. Love Bonito? Okay, so they follow Love Bonito, right? Yeah. There's a communication that says that once there's new stuff being added by yeah. Love Bonito, they actually be updated. It's push notified. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Hi there. Nice Hi. to meet you, Mr. Willen. Kenneth, yeah? Kenneth, nice yeah. to meet you. While Rocket Group, helmed by chef Willen Lowe, runs several restaurant establishments including Wild Rocket and Relish. So what Novosys Juice is really is about a charging network uh, for your service location to help you increase traffic as well as to boost sales. So Novosys Juice is a product that is a hardware, it's a plug and play system for any table that allows for up to two wired and one wireless device charging on the table itself. And so we how, are, much, how much is it for... I saw $40. Correct. Uh, that's what, a month? Correct, a month. Per desk. Per desk. So there's actually an increase in ROI because we believe that one out of four to five people will actually react to the ad that is being pushed through. How do you know one out of five will react to the ad? Uh, we actually went out there to do a ground survey. La. How many customers will have to charge at that table for me to break even? How many customers do you have to charge at that table? Yeah. Okay, so I guess uh, depends on how, what kind of promotions you actually run using this campaign itself. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hi, Hi Simon. How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm good, thank you. Thank you. This is my card. Nice to meet you. Yep. SAP Software & Solutions is the world's largest provider of enterprise application software and software-related services. What we do is we do a lot of data mining to collect competitive intelligence, company profiling, contact intelligence, social data, etc. And then we also run predictive analytics on top of it to indicate sales trigger events. You're targeting who? Are you targeting the marketing department or the sales department first? What do you lead with in your value proposition? Um, so it's a very good question. It's a multi-dimensional use case approach that we have through our platform. How are you better than the data sets that I would buy on the open market today? Here, we use data as a service approach, so you get predictive analytics on top of it. So that is the insight that we bring in along with all the other data components. If we were using it and you were going and marketing it to our competitors, how would you manage that relationship? Uh, this is one of our product for technology vertical. We are building different products for telecom, life sciences, etc. Uh, so we haven't come across any, any conflicts in nature as such. Okay. Thank you, Simon. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Nice right. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Andrea from Mailbird faced a consumer panel that consisted of students and working adults who primarily use the Windows operating system. Hi, guys. How are you today? How many of you have ever at one point in your life been completely frustrated with email? Yep, yep, yep. I don't think you can go on a day without hearing someone complaining about email. What makes Mailbird so special essentially is the fact that it helps you become more productive, a lot smarter with how you actually email, and you save more time and spend less time actually dealing with email. Do you log in with multiple accounts? You can, and that is actually the number one reason why people opt for an email client. It's one hub that you can manage all of your email. How compatible is it with phones? Our focus has really been on the desktop email experience, because when are you sitting down to be really productive? It's when you're sitting at your desktop managing email. I would invite you guys to go to our website today, and I hope you go pro with Mailbird. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Ramesh. Thanks Hello. for coming. Yes. I'm Richard. Hi, Richard. Raven Logistics specializes in providing one-stop service solutions in marine logistics services and freight forwarding. Okay, iCargo is an online commercial logistics marketplace, which makes it easy for you to look for transporters or look for customers. I'm doing marine ship space. Right. Let me just call and say, I need a spare. Yeah. ASAP. Yes. I'll take your, your, your feedback and I'll put in there as urgent, which is means they will have to reply within one, two hours. Yeah. Mr. Ramesh, thank you very much for the time and your feedback. I really appreciate it. Mark from Tenploy had to pitch to a panel of freelancers, students, and employers. Uh, I'm here basically to talk to you about my platform, Temploy, which is a manpower marketplace that anonymously and automatically connects part-timers to jobs. 
So this thing like specifically targets those who are seeking for part-time jobs, really? Yes, it's tar Temploy is actually targeted. That's why it's Temploy. All right, it's targeted at semi-skilled jobs, low-skilled jobs, and transferable skilled jobs. So what happens when a company defaults payment? Because we are positioned as a matching engine, we do not get involved with the payroll. So any payment dispute or the other way around, if there's a situation where the candidate does not show up basically, we will actually lead this to a review system whereby each side can actually review the other. Thank you guys. Hi Alexis, Hi. lovely to meet you. Luxola is an e-commerce platform that sells a wide range of female beauty products in Southeast Asia. So today I will be sharing with you more about INI and how it can integrate with Luxola. For Luxola, we see the opportunity to create a new stream of revenue for you with coolest fashion technology that's not available on any other e-commerce platform. Our ability to make Luxola branded nail wraps and, and get them for our site is pretty easy. What about your technology is different from existing nail wrap technology? We are using a special technology to print this, special combination of lamination, adhesive, as well as inks. I guess then the obvious question is, what's your pricing? We do offer bulk discounts for online um, e-commerce retailers. Like so yourself. what's your wholesale price? A wholesale price would range from 30 to 50% off. The main option we have right now is a just-in-time model, mm -hmm. where customers would first order the product and then we would go and um, manufacture it. But we have same-day delivery to customers in Singapore, so how would you deal with that? I would propose that you start by having five designs to match the theme of your most popular products mm -hmm. so that we will be able to provide you with those designs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Hi, Micah. Hi. Indochine Group is a fast-growing global lifestyle brand that owns restaurants, bars, clubs, and luxury villas. Today, I'm presenting to you about a uh, so FMB solution called SmartSeed. So it's for FMB who wants to move to the next level to improve the productivities, to increase the efficiency, and better customer service. Are you able to link up with bigger operations? I mean, definitely. You know, we just have to understand how your business is. Who, who is the provider of your current backend system, and then we can actually in, uh, talk to the partners, and then how we can integrate in. So, how many units can you control? Uh, there's no limit. We have restaurants using more than 20 tablets at the same time, and then we also have kitchen where they are printing seven, eight printers at the same time. So, in terms of scalability-wise, it's, it's already proven tested. Like location. you have multiple, multiple kitchen, kitchen and bars, yeah. and you can do that. That's right. Thank you for uh, giving time to listen to our, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty good. Thank you. Once the feedback was taken into account, the judges met with the startups for their final assessment. So you were doing a sales pitch? Yes, that's right. Uh, so how do you think you did? I think I did quite fine because um, I feel that she actually did ask some important questions that um, it was naturally why I wanted her to ask. Do you have that one thing that you think that really win her over? I felt that the thing that really won her over is actually the um, new arrivals features to reach to the target customers at any time and um, anywhere they are. As a brand myself for Love Bonito, I think that it will help the brand. Uh, there will be more awareness created and people will be also aware of our updates, what's selling on our site and I think that really will help for both the brand and consumers. So basically, I think that I will give uh, Shopperbot a try. I'll be really interested to see how it goes. Yeah. Hi there, judges. How are y'all doing today? Right. I watched the pitch and uh, I think you are sort of like presenting your product more from your point of view than consider from their point of view. Yeah, I think it was uh, an interesting concept. I can see the aspect of it being value-adding to the customer, but does it bring any money to me? I think that's the biggest question that any uh, restaurant or cafe owner will ask themselves. Definitely, I think there's room for improvement. Uh, I guess one big thing about Novosys Juice is that we are focusing a lot on customer experience. So it would be good if he thought through it, maybe talk to more business owners, you know, to get an idea how best to do this. Hello, judges. Hi. How are you doing? Good, very well, thank you. Good. How yeah. do you think you did? It was a great meeting. Um, SAP is one of the world's largest software company. Getting in front of them is, um, is, a, is, is a good honor for us. I like the fact that he, he obviously you know, he knew who I was, he knew what kind of business we do, and he tried to tailor his pitch to my organization, which is, which is good. Do you think you knew what he was going to buy in, in terms of technology versus solutions? I thought I was able to catch his attention and he was able to understand the value prop as well. He 
he opened with, it's a big data, da, da, da. I mean, yeah, that's, that's all very nice, but, but um, business people don't buy technology. Uh, they, they buy solutions. We run a, a, a bit complex product, so uh, pitching within three minutes was a bit of a challenge for us. Everything he appears to be doing is just scraping publicly available data. So the, the quality of the data and, and, and its real sort of relevance is the thing that I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more. I think I did a good job and was able to um, get his attention and uh, hopefully we'll have some follow-up action. That's good, thanks Thank a lot. Okay. Thanks, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, judges. Looking very sharp today. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you guys. So how do you think you did? I was... Uh, you were going quite quickly, so do you think you connected with the audience? Because I kept pushing. I was trying to close, close, close. So I was saying, you know, go online today. It's free. What's going to stop you? you? You'll even get a money-back guarantee within 30 days. I will consider in purchasing Milbert because I find the cost is quite uh, affordable. I'm quite surprised it doesn't have an app for the mobile phone. I spend a lot of time on my phone checking mail as I on the road. Having it only on the desktop is not a feature for me. Hello, judges. How are you? Hi, Richard. So you were doing a pitch to a logistics uh, company. How do you think it went? I uh, explained to him all the benefits of iCargo and how we can help him. I think it went well. I think this, this idea is okay, but the thing is, um, there are things like insurance, damage of cargo, or they don't make it in time. In the whole thing, I think I will try it out because um, it's new in Singapore. Hello, judges. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Uh, I'm nervous this time. Nervous? Why are you nervous? <laughs> oh, after the last time. Uh, yeah. How do you think it went? I was scared to actually spend too much time addressing who they were demographically rather than talk about the features of the product. And uh, I think it was probably a safer bet if I were to actually give them the value prop as well as basically, you know, how it would benefit them as a business or how it would benefit them basically as a candidate. Uh, I would use Tempoy as the system seems convenient enough and at a dollar at a successful match, I don't see any harm in trying it out. I wouldn't use Tempoy because I, I'm, I'm uncertain of to what extent is Tempoy responsible over the part-timers. I would say Tempoy because uh, I run a family business. I can actually use this for to search for part-timers for my events. Hey judges, looking good today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How are you doing? Good, thank you. So you're doing a sales pitch to a very discerning uh, lady. Yes. How do you think you did? I think her key question was about how this would be different for Luxola compared to other nail wraps. So Candice's pitch for Any was uh, decent. I think she kept saying the technology was, was wonderful and innovative, uh, but we see a lot of very cool technology in, in nail wraps, so it would be important for us to understand further how the product was really different. I do think that we did manage to address it. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, judges. Hi. Hi how are you doing today? Good, good. How do you think he did? Do you think he won him over? I strongly believe that, you know, he, he got him thinking because he even asked for pricing and things like that. Does it fit into your buyer persona? Probably about 17% yes, but 30% no, because they have a lot of system going on. I think this product is good. If you have a new setup, you have limited budget, excellent product. However, because if you've got systems already in place and then you have to add on, then I'm just not sure if it's able to interlink with our counting packages. To me, it's the other way around. 80% of the chance you wouldn't buy it because it doesn't fit in. There's actually different tiers of uh, integration point that we can actually support. Great. Okay. Thank, thank you, you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who do you think actually got their sales pitch right? I expect them to do well, and they do reasonably OK mm. compared to other challenges. How you position the product to meet customers' expectations is key. When we asked all of them, how did you do? And they all of them say, yeah, I, you know, they will sign on. They, they will be my custom. I think some of them just overly confident. Mm. They, they just think too much about what they can do about, and not from the customer point of view. So judges, final challenge. Are we sure we have an absolute uh, conclusion on who's on top? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Sure? OK, great. Startups, I have the results for your sales challenge, so please join me up ahead. So the sales challenge clearly wasn't easy, right? You know, three minutes to pitch to a future prospect, like, wow, you know, honestly, my hat's off to all of you guys for managing to doing that. I, I think it was an amazing effort. But without further ado, I know you guys are dying to know this. I will go ahead and make the announcements. So, 
In third place, we have Inni Nails. In fourth place, we have Mailbird. In fifth place, we have Code to Lab. And in sixth place, we have, any guesses? Novel Sis. So that leaves us with the final four. Now in seventh place, we have iCargo. In second place, Shop Aboard. Nice one there. Now in eighth place, we have Corporate 360. And the winner for this challenge, Temploy. Very well deserved uh, challenge for the winners. You know, I really hope you guys take all the different challenges, the feedback that you've gotten, put them all together and really get ready for the final pitch to the judges. So that's going to be coming up real soon, right? So take that final one seriously. Now the results from that pitch, as well as the results from all the challenges, will determine whether you guys have a shot at the funding from the judges. All right, so it's been a real pleasure working with you guys. You know, regardless of whether you get the funding or not, you guys are amazing startups and amazing entrepreneurs in my eyes. So I wish you guys all the best for the last challenge or the last uh, pitch to the judges. So get back to work, guys. Thanks. I was quite surprised, but I'm very encouraged. This set out of the business owner was a great opportunity for us to really think about moving the business forward. So that sales pitch actually did help us to align our messaging. From this uh, experience, I believe that I validated that maybe my sales process is working. The irony is that uh, how I normally do my sales process is way more dramatic. But after what I uh, encountered in the marketing challenge, I thought to dial it back a little bit because maybe the um, you know, investors don't like that. So <laughs> I probably have to play to the right audience. But honestly speaking, right, I was gunning for third or fourth position. I honestly thought Varun would take this one, actually. Um, I personally believe Corporate 360 does not deserve to be at the bottom table because we are a profitable company. With judges, I definitely feel some level of disconnect. The interactions have not been done to explain the business or understand the business. So certainly I feel a um, very strong disconnect with the judges. Next week, Mohan and I will take a look back at the startup's amazing journey so far and bring you all the exciting highlights.